Hey everyone, this is Arado and we're here to talk about the current banner we have as part of the 2.5 year anniversary. Uh, one of the Music Fest banner featuring uh, Final Emperor, Time Lord, and Wagnas. Before we start, I want to give a quick shout out again to Sato-san for the awesome um, Time Lord artwork we have on display. Uh, when you have the chance, please visit his page. Um, his Twitter handle is at Ultima Patria. Um, he does a lot of uh, Saga Frontier 1 artwork as well as um, the different um, Saga games like um, Hawk from Romancing Saga 1, for example. And with that, um, let's move on to the banner rundown. So I want to start off with uh, Final Emperor or who I call David Bowie because, you know, he kind of looks like David Bowie in a way. <laughs> so he can start um, the battle with a very strong AoE with Galactic Rape. Reef. Um, he has 15 BP at the start of the battle, so he's able to use that Sun Element, AoE, and then SSS damage. That's pretty strong. Um, the SSS, dam SSS damage is a global exclusive change for Galactic Reef. And then he can also um, act as a pseudo tank in a way because he has high protect tension. And then he can also use a Howling Impact where he can... Um, Put up um, attack boost and defense boost to himself so just an fyi that attack boost and defense boost stacks with one another so whenever he uses howling impact he would have three times of the defense boost effect and then with him having uh, 15 bp he can use howling impact twice in a row if he's only using that so having a total of um, six uh, defense boost in a way and then lastly with inherit um he would be able he would be able to extend what he can do in terms of farming you know from global exclusive um, with aoe farming or from the termite style with the double dark blade or row farming with the valentine style where skill number three would eventually have an amplification where it would be become a 10 bp sss damage so something to consider with that um for final emperor um, and then next up we have uh, Wagnas. So Wagnas is more of a hybrid again, kind of, um, kind of like what his uh, pre preview style is, where it's a mix of um a spell and um attack. So you would know by looking at the skill icon if it shows a fire, then it's a spell. If it shows a spear, then it's a physical skill. So with the change for um, for global for Wagnas, he lost his capability of chance petrify, but instead he has a guarantee of getting a BP plus two when he lands an attack. So that means when he lands the first Abaddon hand, he would be able to use Abaddon hands again the following turn due to um, him having um, 12 BP at the battle start and then gaining 2 BP when attack lands and uh, another BP plus 1 at end of turn. So that's why he's able to use Abaddon hands um, for twice in a row. And then if not, he would be a decent uh, single target farmer with uh, skill number 3. Um, unfortunately, it's a little costly with being 12 BP. However, with him being able to um, recover... 6 BP per turn that he would be able to use that 12 0 12 rotation in a way so um and then having high protect tension as well that you would be able to use him in hard content as a DPS if you choose to unfortunately he he's a little lower than you know some of the updated unit units we have um have like more than 110 percent um offensive status and Wagnes is kind of close to that one but a little less which isn't really a big deal but um if you're really wanting to find that hard dps then Wagnes might not be able to deliver in that but it's still pretty good in a way very very flexible with what he can do whether it be single target or aoe farming and then lastly we have um time lord so for Time Lord, he continues to shine as an agility debuffer. You know, the first um, Time Lord style 
um, delay order has been really useful in um, World Tower because it doesn't need to land the hit on the enemy. It would just debuff the agility up front. So it doesn't roll with the willpower too from the enemy. So, and now um, he gains some agility debuffing skills. However, it relies on chances that um, there's a chance to inflict debuff and so on. So that's kind of uh let down for him in terms of agility debuffing because he had delay order where it's almost a guarantee but it's single target now he has aoe agility debuffing but it's by chance and um the good thing is uh time lord is innately high intelligence character so you shouldn't worry too much about um about the debuff being a chance rather than a guarantee and then he also introduces a, a unique buff to everyone where he uh, he can buff action order at a round start and also give action order with skill number three. So those are pretty good stuff to have, um, especially with some battles where you would want to um, act first. Depends on your formation and what the battle situation is. It could be to your advantage. And then lastly... Um, he buffs the party with agility and intelligence, so pretty good support for um, spell-based characters like um, uh, who's that? Like Blue or Rouge and so on. I mean, just thinking on top of my head, but there's so much um, spellcasters. Um, if you're looking at using Time Lord for hard content, um, he would be pretty good. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have high protect tension or any um, defense mitigate at all so he would be a little squishy in a way so just to keep note on that one and um, if you have any um, any guard up or any defense boost that you can give to time lord it would be very useful and allows for him to be to survive um, deadlier attacks so yeah um that's my take on the banner um i feel that all of these characters can be skipped or the banner overall can be skipped time lord has some pretty good utility if you're missing um agility and intelligence buffer or debuffer um well agility and intelligence buffer or agility debuffer um if you have um kailin or kirin from uh, the saga soul banner then you should be okay in um, skipping Time Lord. Um, however, and also just to take note that this style can, is a nice to have if you're gonna pull for UDX Time Lord in the future. Uh, UDX Time Lord continues to have the um, the attack, uh, the action order buff, and then he would also have some passives for the party. So. Um, having skill number three from this Time Lord to that UDX style would be um, pretty helpful. Wagna's um, kind of flexible in a way for farming with AoE or single target and pretty good to bring for hard content having high protect tension. And then Final Emperor is a little weird because just, um, after using Galactic Rift, um, he would have a hard time charging back BP to be able to use that again. Or he would just... Um, default to using um howling impact and then put him in a like a high aggressive stat um slot in a party where he can act as a pseudo tank having high protect tension and then um howling impact give giving a defense boost um the next style becomes a counter style with dragon swoop plus so but unfortunately he would need to go in stance to be able to counter and that's a 12 BP skill as well. So really you won't be able to um, benefit Howling Impact from that. If anything, um, you would be able to use probably the skill number one to buff more strength and then go into um, counter stance. It's a counter dodge stance. So you don't need to worry about defenses. And then he, with the global change for Dragon Swoop Plus that he would be able to gain back the HP if any, if he took any damage while charging back BP. So yeah, um, again, if those are important stuff to you, then by all means, pull on the banner. But um, as you know, we 
recently got the announcement for the part three for Music Fest and Minestrel is really, really good to have, it, especially if you're lacking on a healer and a BP battery. Um, Minestrel would be able to deliver in that. And then having the off banner with the old Romancing Fest characters, eventually a uh, new year Minestrel would be included in that off banner pool. And then you would be able to pick him up and um, have New Year's Melody inherit for that Music Fest Ministro and having like a really good support for a pretty long time, I would say. But yeah, um, those are my thoughts for this for this banner. Um, just play it conservatively if you're gonna pull. Um, I suggest if you're gonna pull, pull for Wagnus if you're lacking a farmer, pseudo tank for Final Emperor. And then um, some support for debuffing and buffing for Time Lord. Yeah, um, that's it for this banner. And thank you so much for listening. And see you in the next stream or video.